October 2023. Mandala. Theta for therapy. Our brain has many levels. The alpha level is the basic one, which most of us are in. To heal memories, especially from past lives, people need to meditate and go to the theta level to release these memories. It does take a while, but when people do it regularly, especially with some hand holding, they are able to heal from issues they thought they could never overcome. Dr. N.K. Sharma, a Reiki healer, past life regression therapist, and nutritionist from New Delhi, who promotes veganism, says, the theta level brain frequencies enable people to go to any time zone physically, emotionally, and spiritually. After taking clients to the theta state, I have helped them heal from several past life related issues by understanding the cause and working on. Same approach with him. A lady from Jaipur had severe back pain and was not healing even after trying many approaches. Her back had no problems as perlopathy, but she kept suffering. A friend asked her to go to Dr. Sharma. Desperately, but without much hope, she went to him. Dr. Sharma took her to her past life after guiding her to go to the Theta state. She found she had fallen from her horse in her past life and still carried those memories. He guided her and completely healed her by enabling her to forget this incident as a bad memory. It did take a while, but now she is completely healed with his guidance and recommends past life regression to all. She says that just as there is childhood trauma, there is past life trauma too which can be healed only with proper guidance. She avers that memories can cause issues, but we can cleanse ourselves through meditation and determination. Reviving Consciousness with Acupuncture Alternative therapies have always recognized the importance of consciousness, which is why their approach is always holistic. Dr. Abid Khan, an acupuncturist from New Delhi, says, in acupuncture, we also treat patients who have lost consciousness. There are two points that we use, kidney 1 on the soul and GB26 on the chin, which are all about consciousness. In the same way, certain points termed Jingwell are pierced when a patient loses consciousness. This shows the power of acupuncture as a complete healing science. In Dr. Khan's own family, when his cousin fainted due to stress and anxiety after coming out of a severe car accident, people wanted to take him to the hospital, but his wife asked Dr. Khan to try acupuncture. She had seen him revive his late mother when she had fainted due to exhaustion by applying acupuncture on her. Dr. Khan immediately worked on his relative's consciousness points and he recovered immediately. Acupuncture is helpful in epileptic fits also. Dr. Khan's success in controlling the seizures of epileptic children has made him quite popular among people suffering from epilepsy. He says, consciousness is not located in the brain but in the heart. Chinese philosophy considers the whole universe an outward manifestation of consciousness. I'm happy that my science is so advanced that it includes consciousness itself. By Jamuna Rangachari Dr. Robin has been successfully treating those patients whom allopaths had given up on, thanks to his mastery over acupuncture. People from all parts of India come to him as his treatment has proved effective. Special care for special needs. Many people often give up on life when faced with a challenge, especially that of a child with a physical or mental deficiency. But some parents do their best and, in the process, inspire others. Ravindra and Sujata Sugwekar from Mumbai, the parents of a child with cerebral palsy, have accepted their son's special needs. Devoting a large part of their lives to parenting him has made them literally live in the skin of others like them. Raising a child with congenital mental and physical challenges is not an easy task. The difficulties faced by the Sugwekers inspired them to create a support system, which manifested into an organization that now provides comprehensive care to individuals afflicted with various disabilities, the emphasis being on persons with disabilities from rural areas. Aware of the lack of residential facilities for children and adults with special needs in rural India, they started the NGO Sangapita in 2003.
It is an organization that epitomizes passionate, involved parenting, where each member is helped to reach their maximum potential and, more importantly, is treated with dignity. Sangopita offers lifetime residential care to the physically, mentally, and sensory impaired and for those with autism. The people they aid are mainly from the lower socioeconomic and impoverished strata of society. Besides residential care, Sangopita also runs a daycare center and special school for the physically and mentally impaired. Ravindra is employed with Punjab National Bank. His colleagues and the bank support him, and many other organizations have also helped him begin this laudable initiative. What after us? is a question that haunts the mind of every parent who has a child with special needs. Residential care for such children is sadly lacking in India. Sangopita hopes to fill the vacuum. At Sangopita, each child with special needs is trained in skills of independent living, including daily activities like using the toilet, bathing, eating, dressing, etc. They also have special caregivers for the severely disabled who need constant care, and they look after the children without their parents' involvement. Thus they help families continue with their regular life with minimum disruption. The NGO started small but is expanding its work slowly but steadily. The fact that we never gave up proves there is a higher power blessing us always, they say with hope and faith. By Jamuna Rangachari